Ideas. Where do they come from? How do we as humans think of something that doesn't yet exist? That's really what an idea is. Why do some people seem to think of lots of ideas and others not so much? Can you get better at, think at thinking of ideas? These are all fascinating concepts and probably ideas for other TED Talks. But what I'm going to talk about is turning ideas into reality. I'm an idea person. I love ideas. I'm constantly thinking of new ones. I've had ideas for flying cars, for GoPro accessories, consumer electronics, drones, cleaning products, and, and many others. But only some of these have turned into something real. So I've asked myself, what's the difference? What's the difference between an idea that just languishes and one that turns into something real? And what I've determined is that the difference is myself and how I treat that idea. Do I focus on it? Do I have the confidence to deliver on that idea? And do I stick with it when it's difficult? I once had an idea for a smart appliance in your home. Uh, your water heater is one of the largest energy consuming devices in your home. And I thought, you know what, if you could make that smart, because that water heater is holding a large volume of water hot all the time, but yet you only use hot water at certain periods during the day. And the rest of the time, the energy is partially wasted. So I thought if you could make the water heater smart, you could save energy because it would learn when you used hot water during the day and shut off when it wasn't needed and then turn back on when it was. And so I got excited about this idea and I, I went home and instrumented my home water heater and found out when it was using power and, and actually determined that yes, you could actually save energy if you made your water heater smart. The problem was that I got distracted at that point. I didn't go any further with that idea. And I got distracted by another idea. That's usually my problem. And I abandoned that old idea because it seemed kind of boring and the new idea seemed exciting. But at the cost of not delivering on that first idea. I also had an idea for a consumer electronic device. This was back in the mid-90s, and I was walking through a college library, and I just noticed how much space is used to just store books. Why not store books digitally and then have some sort of reader that would allow you to read the books on a screen? And you could swap out media of different books. It would be great. This was a novel concept at the time. <laughs> and the problem was that at that point, I, I started thinking too much about it. I started thinking, you know what? It's probably not a good idea. There's, who's going to want to carry you know, this heavy thing that probably weighs more than a book? No one's going to want to read a book on a screen. The battery's probably not going to last very long. So I didn't have confidence in that idea, and I abandoned it. Well, now we have e-readers, and we have iPads and tablets and everything else. And who knows, if I had stuck with it, I would have maybe invented an e-reader. <laughs> but I didn't. I, I do have one more story that turns out a little better. <laughs> I had an idea for a high-speed drone. I've always had a passion for flight, for flying things, and I realized that most drones, this was several years ago, just take off and land vertically, and they hover, but they're very poor at traveling long distances fast and efficiently. So I, not, I thought, why not add a wing to a drone so that it can still take off and land vertically, but then it can transition and fly like an airplane at high speeds efficiently. I thought, you know what, that's, that's probably a good idea. That, that has merit. So I started tinkering with the concept in my garage, 
at home and eventually realized, you know what, this is, this is worthy of some more work. So I took that as a side project into my company, which was a consulting company at the time, with the goal of developing a prototype that flew. And I did that. And along the way, we had a lot of challenges during that process. We had several prototypes that crashed, a lot of software issues, we had money problems, but I decided to stick with it and focus because of my passion and because I believed in this idea. I think drones are going to have a key part in the future. And because I stuck with that, that idea became the X plus one, which is a drone that takes off and lands vertically and flies fast and efficiently like in an airplane. And also out of that created XCraft, which is a company that develops drones. And that company employs many people, has millions of dollars in revenue, and has even been on Shark Tank. All because I focused on that idea and I saw it through. An idea is like a seed. A seed has a lot of potential but it doesn't have much value in itself. Where the value comes is when you plant that seed and you water it, you give it sunlight, and you weed it when it starts to grow, and it can turn into a big, beautiful tree that produces fruit and it produces more seeds, but it has to be cultivated. I often get approached by people that have ideas. Because of my experience, they come to me and they say, I've got this great idea. I'd love to maybe license this idea to some big company and then maybe collect royalty checks. <laughs> and I say, I tell them the same thing. I say, you know, that seems like a great idea, but that idea does not have much value until you turn it into something real. And so I'd like to leave you with this. If you're an idea person, great. Think of ideas. But when you have a good one, focus on that idea and have confidence in that idea and push through when there's obstacles. And if you do, you will be able to turn that seed of an idea into something great. Thank you.